I'm Rick Harris, Executive Director of the National Association of Social Workers. Um, and I've been testifying in this uh, state house since 1983, somewhere over 500 verbal testimonies. So, um, and um, I'll do uh, 274 first. You do have a written version in front of you. Um, and I'm just going to read the first sentence and then walk you for the testimony, but I won't read the whole thing, don't worry. Um, okay, this testimony is in line with uh, our uh, family planning and reproductive choice official policy that takes um, us three years to develop these policies and over thousands of social workers contribute. And if you go to the first page here, if you have it in front of you, it's a policy statement. I'm just going to read the first line of this policy statement. The NASW position concerning family planning, abortion, and other reproductive health services is based on the bedrock principles of self-determination, human rights, and social justice. And then we give four bullets which supports that position. If you go to page two on this document, do you have it? Okay, great. Okay. NASW supports the fundamental right of each individual throughout the world to manage his or her fertility and to have access to full range of effective family planning and reproductive health services regardless of individual's income, marital status, age, race, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, national origin, or residence. And it goes on from there. And we give another four bullets that gives a rationale. So I'll let you read that on your own. It's been a long night, and I wouldn't read it to you anyway. I learned that a long time ago. Don't read your testimonies. Um, if you go down, another part of the policy we have talks about legislation. And this basically discusses that in recent years that Roe versus Wade has been coming under attack in many states, including our own at different points and through different national government policies. And that this speaks well to both bills tonight that we're trying to put a stop to that in this state. And we need to work continually with working towards protecting those rights here. And as you go all the way back to the last, and we have seven points there that has a rationale for that kind of statement there and working towards protecting those rights in this state. And if you go to the last paragraph right here, uh, due to the current uncertainty on the national level, it is crucial we act now on this state level to protect the rights of women and codify these rights in state law. That does the first piece here. The second piece, unfortunately, I printed the previous pre-edited version of the testimony. You wouldn't want that one here. I have them here, but that would be kind of funny if you tried to read that. My pre-edited version is not too well. So I'll email that to you tomorrow, even though it's a vacation day for me, a rare one. But I will address that in verbally here in the testimony. And this is for 660. We speak about, as social workers, and I've done thousands of hours of clinical service, although most people here know me as a macro social worker, which means broad issues, but I've also done thousands of hours of direct clinical service also. We talk about adult loving relationships as our major hope that decisions are discussed between all parties affected. However, there's exceptions to that sometimes, and this bill addresses one's exceptions. And that is um, a talking about a um, decision that a woman may make about her own productive rights. And there are certain reasons why and justification why a woman within a relationship might make, need to make her own decisions. The justification that has to do with our family planning and reproduction choice that we go over here in that policy statement you got in your first area here, why she might, that justifies that decision. It also is based on our values and beliefs regarding the decision over the control of a woman's own body, that justification. Our mission statement, our founding principles in the profession of social work, and guidelines established in Roe Ro versus Wade. Uh, Ro versus Wade. Furthermore, whether a domestic partner is informed that a decision to carry out a pregnancy should be up to the woman to disclose within her judgment and her own reasons. The state, in our opinion, does not supersede the right of that individual and the woman in this case. There are some critical reasons beyond her choice also which she should not have to divulge, including but not limited to mental health issues, abuse by the partner, psychological control by the partner, and other reasons within the family system that we cannot comprehend as outsiders. There's things that are going on with a family. We can understand, we cannot understand that. And she should not have to divulge that. A physician 
even should not divulge that and make that decision for her. It's her decision and her decision only. Nobody has a right to that information. She should have a right to divulge whether she's going to have an abortion or not. No one else. It's her decision for her own reasons only. That this written testimony come to you tomorrow via email. For some reason, it gets kicked it back. For some reason, it does. I don't know why. It gets to some of you, and sometimes it doesn't. If you don't get it, please let me know. Um, the emails that you can contact me is on this first one you have. And I thank you very much, and thank you for being here. I don't know why somebody didn't come and get me. I've been waiting out there all night. I apologize. That's if okay. I had known, I would have recalled you. Things like that happen. <laughs>